I'm thrilled to welcome back Esther Gossweiler and Buck Wild. In our very first episode, they shared incredible stories and amazing photos of sea wolves that they had stumbled upon while studying grizzly bears in a remote section of Alaska. They've returned to Alaska twice since then and are now nearing completion of a sensational film that goes beyond documenting these seldom seen coastal wolves. Esther has painstakingly gained their trust, allowing Buck to record unprecedented footage that may answer the 20,000 year old question of how wolf and human relationships began. The dogs became domesticated. Let's look at a sneak preview. From wild places comes a beast that provokes conflict unlike any other. A creature I have heard but never seen. But is the wolf evil, a cruel beast? Or has its character been masked by myth and legend? For answers, I went to a wild place that knows the wolf well, and humans not at all. And he soon finds me. Happy to reintroduce Esther joining us from Zurich and Buck in State College, Pennsylvania. Hi guys! Hi Laurie! Hey Laurie, great to see you again! I know we have so much to catch up on, but I am absolutely fascinated with this mosquito clip. Um, if it's okay, we're just going to run that really quickly. Esther, can you briefly describe your surprise encounter with Mosquito's pup? We didn't know that he had a family and uh, was a magic, fantastic moment, especially when he brought them out to us. I really had tears running down. never thought that I ever would be eye to eye to a wolf and then having a wolf, a big male wolf, with pups around me, just a few meters away. That was just too much. He laid himself before me, so you wouldn't want to do that with a bear mom and her cubs, but a wolf, I would have never thought that he would be so trustful. I could hear him breathing while behind me the pups were howling. It was just a moment I will never forget in my life. Buck, what are your thoughts on that? And of course, I have all kinds of questions, but I would love to hear your perspective on, on what Esther experienced. Are some wolves in the big picture of things that just trust people. Now this wolf, Mosquito, has formed a bond with Esther and he trusts her like she's one of the pack members. Where was the mother wolf? Great question. Her name, by the way, is Whiteface. Esther names all of the wolves. And the reason you don't see any footage in, in our highlight reels of Whiteface is she doesn't want to have anything to do with us. She won't come within a hundred of the length of a football field to us if we're in the area. But Mosquito will come right up and put his nose right into Esther's camera. And what do you attribute that to? Is it, do you think there's a genetic uh, link to that? I know at, at some point you talk about um, predisposed domestication. I'm very interested to hear about that. Well, as a matter of fact, I just had lunch with uh, our anthropologist, uh, biologist, uh, advisor on the project. Pat Shipman is a, an expert in this field and she believes that certain wolves have a predisposition for a tendency that Pat calls dogginess. Uh, we might call it friendliness or trust 
but but certain wolves like mosquito uh, just are like a dog. I think that's the that's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen, and I cannot imagine experiencing that, Esther. I mean, what a gift from God! I just think that's yeah. just. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. I get chills watching it, so I can't even imagine how you felt being on the ground, seeing that eye to eye and seeing those precious pups being able to trust you as well. And I know that you, you named all the, um, the, the wolves and the pups as well. And you said that there was one uh, little pup that was a little braver than the others named Alex. So do you think um, Alex is going to trust you in the same way? I hope he will be like Mosquito because then we'll have the same encounters. He was the bravest because he was the one who was strolling around and exploring the area. I have good hopes that he became the same brave and trustful. I almost said dog, but it's a wolf. <laughs> I am so excited to see this film and I know that all of our viewers are going to want to see it as well. So when are we going to be able to see it? Do you have a completion date? On a schedule, a hard schedule to release the film next fall, about this time, say September or October of 2023. And I know, you know, from, from running a nonprofit myself, I always am curious where funding comes from. How do you fund this project? It has to be expensive. I know you spend so much time getting there and the equipment and the editing. Um, how are you able to fund a project like this? And why is it important that you're doing this project? Most of the costs have come out of our pockets so far, and we have just started a fundraising campaign on our website. Right, so at the end of this show, I do want to encourage everyone watching just to, to help contribute, even if it's a little bit, and we'll give you that information. And I know I, I giggled this morning when I put my clothes on because I know last time we discovered that we have a, a mutual love for a clothing line called Cool, and I have my cool pants on today. <laughs> and, and I just think that was so funny that, that that's one of your sponsors because they make amazing clothes. And I see you guys crawling through marshes and wading through water and there's snow in the background. So Esther, tell us about um, your experience with wearing cool clothes up in Alaska. <laughs> have rough weather out there but it's all a matter of having good clothes they protect you they keep you warm they make you feel safe you don't feel the weather when you're dressed properly as the Alaskans say there is no bad weather you just need the right clothes and with cool clothes we have the best well I agree and I'm in Florida and it suits me just fine too so <laughs> I'm glad we have that in common cool has been providing outdoor clothing to my film projects for 10 years now, starting with Great Bear Stakeout. We're no stranger to wearing the best clothes uh, in Alaska for tough weather. So now, Buck, I know that you've uh, made a career of helping filmmakers and scientists study grizzly bears, but I know Esther, you, not so long ago, were just a tourist. So how does it feel being a civilian difference maker, helping to protect wolves? Through all my encounters, I learned that wolves are not aggressive as many people think. A wolf like Mosquito, I mean, he did behave more like a dog than anyone would expect. To discover that made me feel sort of um, humble. To have the privilege to show that to other people makes me feel content and happy and of course I hope to change some attitudes of viewers. Well and I think that's exactly what you're doing and I think that's why your work is so important. Even as a child we grow up with Red Riding Hood and the big bad wolf you know so it's instilled in our brains from a very young age and I think it's so important that people get to see how gentle these creatures are and that we have to protect them. We have to protect them for years to come. I'd just like to say to your dog lovers out there that, that think that a dog is one thing and a wolf is another, hopefully by seeing our film, you will see that a wolf is more like a dog than you ever expected, and a dog is perhaps more like a wolf than you thought. They're, they're really close to being the same thing. 
And I can attest to that, Buck, as I mentioned earlier, I played your clip last night when I was preparing for today and my pack of dogs in my room started howling. <laughs> <laughs> How wonderful. So thank you both so much. And I want to encourage everyone to learn and support Esther and Buck's project. So you can go to wild2c.com to do that. And to learn more about Aliqua, go to aliqua.org. I'm Laurie Hood, and thank you for joining us.